What's going on, guys? So unless they've been living under a rock, you know that Instagram is rolling out their Twitter clone called Threads, and it officially came out today. I've been on it for about, I don't know, three hours now, have had a chance to kind of dive into it, play around with it. I've actually spent, spent a lot of time on it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And what I want to do is shoot a video today to kind of break down whether I think this app has legs. Should Elon, should Twitter be concerned? Is it a true competitor to Twitter? Um, or is this another metaverse? Is this is another app that Meta rolls out that's a clone, it's a copy, and ends up being a huge flop. So uh, after spending a good amount of time with it, I actually have to say, I think there, and I kind of buried the lead in the beginning of this video, I think there's a lot of things that they're doing right with this app. I think Meta has a lot of unique advantages with uh, both the uh, the technology, with the resources they have, with their infrastructure, with public sentiment, with what's going on culturally right now. There's a lot of, of things working in their favor that I think give them actually a really good shot at this being another big app for them, this being the next big thing that can drive a lot more users, a lot more time on app, and eventually revenue through advertising, which will inevitably end up here if this thing becomes a huge home run and a huge hit within the next probably six to 12 months, I would say. So let's dive in. I'm going to actually pull up the... Um, the phone here. So in case you haven't actually downloaded threads, you can actually access it directly from, you can go to the app store and probably by the time you watch this video, it'll be publicly available and you can just search threads and download it. Um, or you can also just go to your Instagram profile and in your Instagram profile, if you go to search, you can search for the keyword thread, a little admin one icon will pop in the search bar. You can click that or you can go to your Instagram menu and from there access threads. So there's a lot of places you can access it. It's pretty easy to find. Um, and then when you get, get through the setup process and the app and everything, you then come into this user interface. And it's pretty basic, pretty bare bones. So you basically have five, five tabs. You have a home, you have a search, you have a new thread, you have a activity center, um, which getting tons of dopamine hits today. This is they're they're really doing well engineering wise, engineering the dopamine hits on the app. Um, it's been been pretty wild. As you see, I got picked up over 500 followers in three hours, which is one of the the benefits, one of the perks they have, one of the things they have going for it, which I'm gonna talk about in just a few minutes. Um, and again, here's your profile. So you can actually just import everything. You can write something new or you can just import everything directly from Instagram. So I just pulled in my bio, my LinkedIn bio, my profile, everything I just pulled in. So I don't do any work. I just basically copied from Instagram into threads and now I have my threads account and same username as your Instagram. Um, you have your threads, you have your replies, you can dive into a thread and very similar to Twitter, right? You have a like, you have a comment, you have a repost, you have a share and... Um, and yeah, so so pretty basic, pretty bare bones. But I actually think let's start with kind of point number one. I actually think it's an advantage, this simplicity here. Um, one of the things that's been happening with Twitter, right, is that, and I, I love Twitter, I love Elon, what he's doing with it. Um, you know, that may be a controversial statement, but I actually happen to be a fan um, for most of this stuff. They're trying to add too many things, right? He wants to make Twitter the every, kind of the X company, this everything app. And I think there are some, there's some merit to that. I think that's, there's a possibility that becomes the thing and it's a huge win for Elon. I wouldn't bet against him, but I think it actually opens up a unique slot for Meta to come in and basically just go back to the, the good old days of Twitter, right? When Twitter was basically just this, like this is what it was. You just had 140 character tweets. You just text posts, you could tweet, you read retweets. And that was basically it. Um, and so now I think there's a craving for people like simplicity. I just want to go back to kind of the early days where all I had to worry about was just writing something and reading something. And it was pretty basic. Right now, Twitter has, you know, it's got Twitter Blue. It's got all these programs. It's got subscriptions. It's got memberships. It's got multimedia content. It has video now, video feeds. It's got so much stuff in there that you can kind of get lost in the shuffle. Um, so that's kind of point one, why I think this app has actually some uh, some good legs and a good chance to be successful is, is the simplicity and the minimalism of it. It's very addictive because it's so pure. It's like, it's very easy to write content on. It's easy to consume content. It just feels really natural. Uh, I'm really enjoying the user interface of it. The engineering of it from the gamification standpoint, the dopamine hits, really well done. Um, so that's, that's one. 
the second thing I'll talk about here, and this comes down to like the fact that I already have, you know, over 500 followers in less than three hours, which I actually just posted here saying like, I think it took me over a year to get 500 followers on Twitter. And this is, you know, going back 10 years now, but like when I first started Twitter, it probably took me maybe more than a year to get 500 followers. I got that many followers in a night on threads. Now, part of that is because, uh, and this is an advantage, Instagram has this network effect. Meta already has the apps. And I'm going to uh, stop sharing this because it keeps just going crazy. My phone beeping and all the buzzing, all the stuff right there. So um, because this is an Instagram app and because most people already have Instagram followers and a community and audience there, you can basically port that community over. Um, so, you know, in, a lot of social media companies have been talking about the idea of like owning your audience, be able to move your audience. That was kind of the promise of Mastodon and these different Twitter competitors out there. Um, it's kind of what Instagram is starting to do here, what Meta is starting to do here, although it's it's in the ecosystem, but it's kind of like, hey, I've built an audience Instagram. Now I can kind of move that audience over to threads. And so I'm not starting from zero. And this is great and really important and something that's gonna be hard for anybody else to be with Twitter on. Because if you're a brand new social media company, Right. The problem is if you want to launch a Twitter competitor, that Twitter's kind of useless if there's nobody on Twitter. Right. That idea of like being able to send messages and read messages and stuff. If there's nobody out there to read your messages, like why would you download the app? And if you don't have a reason to download the app, nobody downloads the app, so nobody ever posts. It's this vicious circle, right? That creates it makes it very, very hard to have the network effect and to break out. That's why it's very hard to build a social media company because you need a critical mass of users. So with this like Threads is launching basically as a kind of new app, but it's really an app built on a multi-billion user base, person user base. So nobody's really starting from scratch when it comes to Threads. Everybody has some built-in audience. And so that's important. So when you post your first thread, it's not crickets and your second thread and your third thread and fourth thread. You need to give users wins early on. This is really important for marketing, whatever you're doing. You want your customer, you want your user to experience a really, really quick win or series of wins, even if they're small wins. And so for me, when I came on here and my first thread I posted got a bunch of likes and it got some reposts and my next one got more likes and it gave me wins, gave me dopamine hits. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'm, I'm getting engagement, I'm getting responses. And then I was like, I'm getting more engagement than my Twitter profile, which has, you know, 10 times more followers. And so that is going to be really powerful for them. It's going to work in their favor. It's going to get a lot of the power users over there because they don't have to start from scratch anymore. They can just move users over and get the, the balls that are rolling. The momentum's already happening for them. So that's another one. Um, another reason why I think this has legs has to do with uh, competition, right? So over the last few years, all the big social media companies, all the big tech companies have been trying to compete with TikTok. TikTok's been setting the playing field and everyone's been playing catch up in terms of short form video and TikTok style videos and the For You page and the, the kind of endless scrolling and that as their primary driver of new features and new apps people have been coming out with, which means that there are a lot of apps, both big, big ones and lots, lots of startups that are all competing in the kind of multimedia, social media space and content space, photos, videos. That's the focus. A lot of people have not been focusing on text. Twitter's kind of operated in this weird island for a very long time where nobody's really tried to build a, or at least at, a lot of people haven't done it, like a real Twitter clone. It's just not been a sexy topic or category. Sure, you've had, you know, the, you have the Mastodons, you have these types of apps out there, but they're, they're different. They're open source, they're different, they're protocols. It's not a true Twitter competitor and they have their own uh, a bunch of issues with getting that to be successful. And then you have companies like Substack, which I guess you technically could kind of kind of call a Twitter competitor to a degree. They have Twitter features in there, but it's not really wasn't built to be a Twitter competitor, right? It's more so like if you're a Twitter user, Substack is a way to kind of monetize and build on top of it and get longer form content out there. So we went through this multi-year period where none of the big tech companies have invested in building anything text-based. And so that's left this void open where you basically don't have a lot of competition and Meta can come in, Instagram can come in, and basically enter this market that nobody's really competing in um, and do it really, really well and do it with a lot of resources, with a lot of capital, a lot of engineering talent and a massive user base. Um, and they don't really need to reinvent the playbook. It's pretty simple. And I think there's, what you're gonna see is like, there's a need for more text and audio-based platforms, especially for all the people out there that are introverts, that are shy, right? That's, the, that's been the biggest drawback of 
Um, when I, I talk to a lot of business owners, a lot of people who know they need to create content, they know they need to create content for ads and stuff, but they struggle because they're not, they don't want to be on camera. They're not confident in front of the camera. They're not confident with the phone being pointed at them. They don't like doing that. And so they struggle to create content because they're uncomfortable shooting videos or even just images. And so Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, they miss out on this very large audience of people that want to create content, want to share their knowledge with the world, want to talk about things that interest them, but they don't want to do it on video. And so Twitter's always been a haven, like a safe haven for those people. And now you're going to see it with with, um, threads where you have a lot of people that have wanted to participate in the Instagram world, in this community, but never wanted to be on camera and share that. But now they can with text. It's also a lot easier to create content and more content if you're just writing as opposed to filming and editing and posting and all that stuff. So I think that's going to be a huge advantage for, for threads as well is that format, that type of content being text instead of photos and videos. Now, the final one I hit on tonight, and there's, I think, a lot of other reasons I can dive into deeper. And I'm curious if you're watching this right now, what do you think about threads? Have you downloaded it? Do you like it? Do you think it's got legs? Do you think Twitter and Elon should be concerned? Let me know in the comments below. And always, as always, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you get all my future videos. Um, and also be sure to follow me over on threads at Max Finn, all one word, the at symbol, M-A-X-F-I-N-N. Follow me over there. I'm going to be posting a lot of content there over the coming days, weeks, and months. Um, now, the final one has really nothing to do with meta itself. Um, it's more luck. And that has to do with public sentiment and, and the media. So right now, Elon, and it's been this way since he bought Twitter, is public enemy number one. He is hated by most politicians, by most of the media, and by a lot of the public um, that... Uh, happen to follow those individuals that like that type of media and, and that's where they consume content. They view Elon as a villain. They view him as somebody that is a, you know, exemplifies all the things that are wrong with capitalism and our country and and this rich guy who can come in and just buy companies and, and, and put his will in there and ban people and change the rules and, and people view it as like an attack that he took something that other people loved and changed it and they don't like that. And so there's this massive negative uh, the the opposite of goodwill. There's a lot of bad ill will, right, against Twitter and Elon Musk. Well, mainly Elon Musk, but that's transferred to Twitter because he owns Twitter, right? And so what's amazingly happened, and I think this is actually pretty ironic, is that somehow, this is how sometimes I think we live in a simulation because some of this stuff doesn't make sense, but somehow we now live in a world in 2023 where Zuck and Meta is the the hero and the good guy in this story, right? Because they're launching this competitor to Twitter and Twitter is evil. And so in this narrative where it's Twitter versus company A or B or C, whatever that company ABC is, is inherently going to be the good guy for most people because Twitter is the bad guy. And so if somebody's competing against them, that must make them the good guy. And so in this weird, bizarre world, Facebook now is Meta's back on the good side after spending years and years and years as the, the villain as the most hated company in the world. Zuckerberg was one of the most hated people in the world. Uh, you know, nobody trusts him in privacy, all the things they did. Somehow they, it's, they've waited it out and this just goes to show you like eventually people forget about everything, right? If you just can wait people out for long enough, people move on. The public moves on and finds a new enemy. And so I think it's actually going to work in their favor. Unfortunately for Elon and Twitter, it's bad timing for them because they are on the media's hit list. And what this means is over the coming weeks and months, be on the lookout, you're going to see just an insane amount of media coverage uh, on CNN, MSNBC, all the big TV networks, on all the big New York Times, Washington Post, te- all the tech blogs, TechCrunch, Mashable, Gizmodo. They're all going to be posting glowing articles, stories, features, exposés on threads, on its success, on how well it's doing, all this stuff. And it's going to be positioned as Twitter killer, Twitter killer, Twitter killer. This is going to beat Twitter. This is going to be Twitter. This is going to take Elon down. Elon's worried. And so it fits that narrative. So Threads is going to get a lot of free publicity. They're going to get a lot of free media coverage um, that you really can put a price tag on. And so that's going to be very helpful to them because that's going to keep this app top of mind, keep people really excited about it because every major media outlet and every big influencer and pundit in the space is going to be talking positively about this app because they want it to succeed because they want Twitter to fail. And so I think, you know, unfortunately, Twitter has a lot of, of uh, 
things going against it, working against them right now, and that's going to work in Thread's favor. So curious what you guys think about this. Do you think, like I said, do you think Thread's um, has legs? Do you think it's going to be a successful app? Do you think it's going to be around uh, six months from now, 12 months from now, two years from now? Um, and also more importantly, like, do you think it's an either or? I, I personally don't. Like, I know a lot of people like to think of um, in like in or statements, meaning it can either be Twitter or threads. I don't think that's the case, right? It's usually end, meaning, you know, what's most likely going to happen is threads is going to be successful and people are still going to use Twitter and they're going to use threads, just like people still use TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and other channels. So it's everyone likes to, when the, these things happen, think about the ors. It's a battle. It's winner take all. The reality is it's really never the case. Um, now, one can do better than the other. One can take market share. At the end of the day, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of room for everybody in this marketplace. So, um, but yeah, after my, you know, first, first few hours in the app, I do think this, this app, uh, is looking really promising. It's got a lot of stuff going for it. I think it does have a very, very good shot at being successful. And I think as an advertiser, what that means, and as a, a business owner, what that means is one, you need to start creating content there, start building your audience there, start getting familiar with it. It's going to be really important. Um, and also just whenever you're new to, whenever there's a new app, when you use it first, whether it was Clubhouse, whatever the app is, even if it's going to be a flop, you can still do very well in the short run because if you're early on the app and you use it every day and use it frequently, you will be rewarded. It's how these apps operate. They, in the early days, they reward early users with disproportionate levels of reach and engagement. They really amplify you because they want you to get wins. They want you to get hooked on it. They want you to get dopamine all the time. So you keep using it and tell your friends about it. And then eventually as it gets more popular, they throttle back the reach and it becomes normal. Um, but in this interim period, in the next few months, whether it becomes a flop or a hit, there's still a massive opportunity to capture market share, to sell your product, to build your audience, to grow your following, to grow your influence, all that good stuff. Um, and then also just from an advertiser perspective, if this does stick around and it does become you know, mainstream and popular, I would say at the earliest, probably six months, but more likely at the 12 month mark, we'll start to see ads that'll be running this, which will open up a lot more inventory for meta, which will be great for advertisers. It'll help with ad costs. It'll help with another like hyper-engaged type of audience targeting. There'll be a lot of cool stuff from an advertising perspective. So let me know what you guys think. And as always, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get all my videos and uh, hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.